Yeah. Glad to have you here this morning as we celebrate the life of Milan, but most importantly even, the life that he was given in Christ, so that he is eternal life now and uh, healed. And uh, I won't say do more about that because that will get into my sermon time. But um, we were waiting for the bell to ring, except I was told that everybody was talking so much that we couldn't hear the bell. So, so we're running a couple minutes late, but... Um, with Milan's death, death at the nursing home and what happened, uh, Barbara would like to just address that a little bit so that everybody knows how that all took place. Okay? All right. Thank you, Pastor. Um, Uncle Milan went peacefully and to the Savior. He had been very frustrated but very happy at the nursing home. All of the nurses there Everyone took good care of him, and the, his final uh, hour or minutes, he was with one of his favorite nurses. Um, we don't know what happened, but he was being taken care of, and he wanted to help to turn himself over. So he grabbed onto the very short the rail, and when he did, he just flipped over onto the floor. He was conscious. He was had a good rapport with the nurses. They were talking to him. And he just said that his back was hurting and wanted to go to the hospital. Uh, from that point, then maybe an hour later, he had passed away. But I know he passed away peacefully. And it was the best for him. And I'm very thankful for all the staff there and for how things happen. You know, we cannot plan when the Lord will call us, but it was the best for him. I know, thank you for everyone who had done their little part to help him, And um, but he is happy now. He is at peace and he is at rest, and that's very important. Yes, thank you, Barb. Appreciate that. Um, I will be conducting the service mostly from the wheelchair because my leg still hasn't healed well enough for me to stand up during the whole service. So you have to excuse me for that, but that's kind of the way it is right now. Uh, but I, I like to tell you, uh, let me get in here and sit down. Those of you who are maybe not familiar with the tradition of the Paul which is what this white cloth with the crosses is called. We cover up the casket with the pall uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one is that the main reason is it symbolizes uh, baptism, his baptism uh, to the Lord. He was baptized as a child, a young child. And uh, at that time, the Lord came, and like I tell my young people, the little ones, the, the very young, I tell them that uh, he, uh, in that baptism, God reached down and marked their forehead with a little cross that we can't see, but God can see it. And that's what Milan uh, became united with Christ at that time in his death and in his resurrection. So uh, we have that promise of that. The other reason that we have the Paul is it is what I call like an equalizer. It makes no difference whether that is a very, very expensive casket or a very inexpensive casket. 
It is, uh, this covers it up and, uh, and shows the equality of the Christian church and of God's love. So I learned a lot of things about Milan, uh, and some of them are, and we probably don't want to tell them all here at the, in the church, in the sanctuary, but we could probably talk about some of those down afterwards in the fellowship hall. <laughs> Uh, Mylon was a character sometimes, and uh, he had his moments and other times, but you know, there are a lot of people did love him, and he loved the Lord, and he went to a lot of different Bible studies, and, and here at the church, I understand that he was, uh, until he had his stroke, he was here all the time. He just loved doing things here at the church, and, uh, and so he'll be fondly remembered for that. Um, I... I belong to this congregation for oh, 10 years, I guess now, but as a retired pastor, I was always preaching at other congregations, and so I only came maybe two or three times a year of that, and that's all I did. But uh, uh, Mylon, uh, I liked Mylon. I would talk with him, uh, have communion with him as we celebrate the Lord's Supper every uh, twice a month, and. Uh, what we would do, what I do is I record, I would, uh, we live stream the service. And so I would uh, then, that afternoon after the service was over with, I'd take my laptop over there at, to the nursing home and we would uh, watch uh, the service uh, together and uh, then celebrate the Lord's Supper. So that's something that he always enjoyed doing. You know, and, and those of you that maybe went over to see Mylan after his stroke realized the problem he had in communicating. His brain was good. That was not a problem. It's just can't get the words out. And uh, he'd get frustrated, and I'm going, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, I've been messing with this leg for since late November, and I get frustrated. So I can understand that. But he was, wasn't a good place. They took care of him, and... And every so often, uh, I'd stop by and see him. Uh, he'd always come to the uh, Thursday morning uh, class that I held over there, a little uh, devotional that I did over there. But uh, I just want to share some of that. I wish there was more that I could share with you uh, because uh, I just, not growing up here, uh, I, but like I say, I've heard some really good stories. So... Uh, <laughs> You'll probably could share some of those when we get through with our worship service. But we, the family, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, to, like I say, celebrate his life, but most certainly his life in Christ. So let us begin our worship. Please stand. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We sing our opening hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
Please be seated. In holy baptism on the 23rd of March, 1947, Mylon Veliki was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sins. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Please respond, We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death. In order that just Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. I like to, uh, when we have uh, particularly the funerals, but we do this every Sunday, uh, have us make public confession of our Christian faith. And I think it's particularly important for all of us to be reminded of that common faith that we have. We might be separated by different doctrines, different how we practice our religion, all that kind of stuff that just separates Christians when uh, God wants us to be one people. And uh, that's how we are to be a witness to people. And one of these ways of doing this is by saying together the faith that unites us in God. So God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Milan and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. This is the word of the Lord. Let us join in reading responsively that wonderful 23rd Psalm, that psalm that brings such comfort to all of us, especially in our times of need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they are with me. 
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Another reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and all shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and the mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fifth chapter. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I'm always forgetting about that cane. For those of you that have maybe had to use a wheelchair before on occasion, you learn real quickly to lock the wheels before you sit down or get up. (laughs) We've gathered here today to not only remember Mylan's life, but also to give gratitude and honor to our Savior who has made it possible for us not to look on death as the end, but the continuation of life in the presence of God. I've always loved reading in the New Testament the different verses where Jesus would just say, Why are you crying? Why are you in despair? They're only sleeping. Then, of course, as a great picture for us, he would raise them up to life, restore them to the fullness of life. Unfortunately, it wasn't permanent life. They would all die sooner or later. But that picture of Jesus saying they're only sleeping, and that's the way I look at at, at, at the body in the coffin. In God's eyes, he's only sleeping, waiting for that time to be raised out of that coffin and brought back to life in a way that we can't even imagine. It's going to be so wonderful. Fact is, when we go out to the cemetery, I have a blessing of the grave. And we bless the grave as the place that, where he's going to be waiting for that resurrection. What about our earthly life? 
According to God's word, as it's found in James, it's but a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And in Psalm 90, you sweep men away and men away in the sleep of death, yet they are like new grass every morning, though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. You know, when you're young, those words don't mean a lot. Because you're not even thinking of that. But as we get older, that starts coming to our attention more and more. Especially when we're having as many funerals to attend as we've been having. Life is short. It's uncertain. Mylan was being cared for. Given a, a bath, I guess it was, and all of a sudden, it was over. I was walking my dog, minding my own business, enjoying a nice, beautiful morning. When all of a sudden, I found myself on the sidewalk, a wet sidewalk, with a really badly fractured leg. And I thought to myself, because I wasn't sure what had happened, is this the way it ends? But it's okay, because I'm a child of God. It's uncertain. Ecclesiastes, we're reminded of the words, Ecclesiastes, it's time to be born and time to die. This side of the grave, we would not know it. On the other side of the grave, we would not know what it's like. It was not for God's word. For it is in God's word, his word alone, that we are told there is eternal life for those who believe and trust in Jesus as their Savior. Even though we don't understand every detail, how can we? It's a God thing, and we can't understand God. We talk about him, we try to put him in human terms, we try to grasp what we can, but it's everything we do is just like nothing compared to his greatness and his power and his glory. But we can go to God's word because in God's word we have the hope, the sure hope. As we look ahead to the end of our earthly journey, Paul in his letter to the congregation in Corinth tells us in very picturesque language, and I picked this today, this particular passage, because I think it applies to, to us and to Milan as he neared, the well, particularly the last, what, four years of his life. But that we have nothing to fear, that no matter how we die or when or where, and no matter what our physical condition might be at the moment of our death, we have a promise from God that death cannot break. Paul writes this, We know that in truth, that it is in truth, for God tells us that when this earthly tent, well, pages stuck together, we have a, let me start again. We know that is the truth, for God tells us that when this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And there's two words I want you to really listen to this morning, and that is the word tent and then the word building. Very important words. St. Paul says our bodies are like tents. Now we all know tents can be fancy, they can be plain, they can be small, and they can be big. They can be made from very exquisite, fancy material or just cheap material. But no matter in the end, tents by their very nature are temporary. Some last longer than others. And eventually they need to be disposed of as they wear out. Now, for those of us who are older, we understand 
probably better than the young folks do, about our bodies being compared to tents. Because as a tent gets older, what usually happens to it? It starts to sag, places we really don't want it to sag. And it starts to fray at the edges a little bit, right? Wrinkles appear in the fabric. Our joints get creaky and arteries harden and heart problems develop and eyes grow dim and arms grow weary and our muscles weaken. Our, our bodies, whether by an accident, our age, end in our physical death. The tent gets disposed of. That is our fate. We don't want to lose hope in that because that just describes the reality that we all will go through. Unless Jesus Christ comes here and we're all here alive and he just welcomes us, which would be a good thing. But the good news is, as St. Paul writes, once this earthly tent that we live in is destroyed, something that none of us are really comfortable with hearing, we have a building from God. A building. Not a tent, a building, a permanent structure. An eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. The one you see that's built by God is strong and is built on the foundation of Jesus. It's permanent and never wears out. The one fact I think that we all need to really pay attention to, particularly when we're talking about a Christian's death. We have a lot of mixed feelings. In Mylan's case, it's really kind of a, of a, a sigh of relief because we know what he was going through. But at the same time, we mourn because there's not going to be any more talking to him or hugs or jokes or reliving past memories of childhood and young adulthood. That's gone. Only in our memories. But I think we need to remember that this is not the end. But a beginning. Or maybe I should say as a Christian, it's a continuation of life. We see end, but God sees continuation. The door to the heaven has been opened up. And Mylan has gone through that door. His soul is with the Lord. And we don't know, I shouldn't say we don't know, we don't know the time it's going to happen, but at some time, God's going to call everybody that believes up from that grave, and their bodies are going to be restored. Mylan is going to be restored in a way that we can't even imagine, just as each of us will be. And restored with the soul as God created it to be. He, didn't, he did not create a soul to be separate from the body. The body and soul are belong together and God will have it. And somebody, somebody once asked me, one of my confirmation students once asked me years ago about what is heaven like, this new heaven and new earth. And I said, I think it's probably going to be like the old Garden of Eden before sin was brought into it. But it's going to be better and be forever living and we'll all be living in peace and harmony with each other and the earth but most importantly living in the presence of God all of us that are separated by whatever religious Christian religious beliefs will just be united and that'll all be gone past never to be thought of again because we'll know the truth I think that's what's going to happen on Resurrection Day. And we question that. Is it really going to be that way? Well, let's look at what God's Word says. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, right? 
We have the Lord's presence, his word, but we're not with the Lord physically. For we live by faith. Faith. Not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. That's a much better thing. But at the time of resurrection, the body and the Lord, the soul, will all be united together. Can you imagine what it's going to be like to see Jesus? Actually see him and talk to him, walk with him. This life that we live is by faith because we don't see him in person. We just see him and know him in the word of God. The dead will rise first, then Christ returns. I think that's kind of important. The dead, all the billions of people that died in the Christian faith will come up first and then we will then be united with the Lord. What a wonderful promise that is. So we take comfort in our grief in the coming weeks and months knowing that Milan is with the Lord, awaiting that day. That's our ultimate hope. And that was Milan's sure hope in his times of trouble. I know this because, and I hope I don't have this wrong, but I seem to remember seeing on his bulletin board, I think it was a bulletin cover, that said, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The continuation of that is, it's a quote from a psalm, and it's found in about, 10 different psalms but in this one it says oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and the south some wandered in desert wastes finding no city to dwell in Hungry, thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from his distress. The Lord delivered man from his distress, just as he will deliver each of us from our distress. So we can all say, we ought to say this together. I'll say it first and then we'll say it again. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For in Christ saves you, he doesn't just save your soul. He saves every part of you. And every part will be delivered from sin. The resurrection of the body on that day that Jesus comes back to call the dead from their graves is that last step in salvation. That's when death will be put under his feet forever gone. It's my earnest prayer that in your grief you will find comfort in God's words in the coming weeks and months and years ahead. Knowing that Milan is with the Lord waiting for that time when you will see him again and he will see you. What a joyous day that'll be. And it's all because of God's amazing grace in which we're going to sing about now. Amazing grace in your service. Amen.
That's got to be one of the hymns that we'll sing for all eternity. Wonderful hymn. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord our God and the Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion as the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Give to the family of Milan and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved that within the communion of your church, they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Milan, for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. O God of all grace, You sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray together the last prayer. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in faith through Jesus Christ, your Son, Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us give all honor and praise to the Lord. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good, 
that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing our closing hymn. Depart in peace, knowing that you are loved by God.
blessings to you. May have God's peace. What's happening? Doing all right? Good. Yeah, doing better. My leg swells up.